back when we used to fly on airplanes, right? When the oxygen mass drops, you have to put your own before you can help anybody else, right? Um, and so, yes, you absolutely have to prioritize you, which may sound counterintuitive when we're talking about relationships, but really prioritize getting to know yourself. Um, what, what was your parents' relationship like? What was your childhood like? What are your insecurities? Um, getting to really know who you are, what your strengths are, what your struggles are, that is nothing but helpful when it comes to relationships. So second on the list, part of getting to know yourself is sort of being comfortable with your past. Yes, and this, this might not be an easy feat when it comes to being comfortable with your past because perhaps there's a lot of uncomfortable and or traumatic things things that have happened in your past. Um, and so getting comfortable with your past is simply my way of conveying that we need to look at that stuff. I think so many of us who have struggled um, in our childhoods or experienced adversity, toxic stress or trauma, we want to kind of put it in a box and put it away and not think about it, not talk about it. And it just doesn't work like that. I wish it did. Uh, it would be life would be so much easier if we could do that. But that's not how it works. It's especially not how it works in relationships with people that we we share our every day with, um, because that is the closest thing that mimics early childhood relationships. So all of those dynamics, good or bad from your past will be a part of your present. And it's simply a matter of how much you know that's happening and you've got some insight and reflection and then some control around it. But if you put your head in the sand and act like the past is the past, then, then we give up We give up some amount of control um, because the only way we can change things is by becoming aware of them. You also say you need to master your nervous system. What does that mean? Yeah, you know, master is probably the wrong word, quite frankly. Um, I wish we could master our nervous systems, um, but the idea is that we should try, right? Uh, so mastering our nervous system for me is like knowing about fight, flight, freeze, that when we experience something that feels threatening or angering or stressful, we respond by fighting physically or verbally, by running away, by freezing like a deer in headlights, um, and to know a little bit about what that looks like, what that feels like in you, to know how to bring yourself back to a place of baseline and recovery rather than activation where we're either fighting with people or running away. You know, these things are not inherently helpful, um, but they are gifts from the ancestors of our past. So having an idea of what that looks like and how that shows up in ourselves can help us better regulate our moods and how we communicate, which is obviously essential in relationships. Speaking of fight, is it okay to fight with your significant other? It is more than okay to fight with your significant other. I think in America, we get so socialized that fighting is bad fighting is pathological, but it, it's simply not true. Now, obviously we, we, want, we don't want to be abusive. Being abusive and having conflict are two very different things. So let's be clear, uh, not giving you permission to be abusive verbally, emotionally, physically, but arguing, engaging in conflict is good. Re research has shown time and time again that the amount that couples fight is actually not what predicts if they divorce. Um, it's how they fight. It's how they repair, more importantly. That is predictive of if people stay together or not. So get comfortable with fighting and then really put a lot of effort into how do we make up and how do we repair the connection we have. And finally on the list, at the end of the day, you've got to get away from your partner. Yes. Which again, sounds a little, can sound counterintuitive, especially for people in the, the first blush of love or that honeymooning phase. Um, but I'm, I'm an important and special human being prior to meeting my partner, right? So it's really important that I continue to honor the person I am outside of my husband. 
So that's the first point. But the second is that getting some, some physical space, which I know is really hard right now, but getting some physical space can be incredibly helpful for that repair portion after a conflict that we know is so essential for keeping uh, relationships together. So having physical space, having time away, it just continues uh, to help you feel solid in who you are and clarifies how you feel and can communicate with your partner about what's going wrong. 